spoilers, spoilers, and massive spoilers. If you haven't seen ReZero, what are you doing watching this video and listening to me about potential massive spoilers? All right, so I thought it would be a good idea to do an extra ReZero video, and I have other ideas than this, but this will be the first one. Um, so, cool clan. I want to talk about my favorite three characters of ReZero. Life in another world. So, <laughs> they'll be the um, fairly obvious choices. I'll also briefly talk about each of them for my notes. My notes, that's just how I go about things. I've written down boatloads of notes about everything for the vlog. Um, so, ooh, wait. Which one's my favorite character? Oh, shoot. I didn't think about that. I just thought about top three. Well, we'll go with it. I'll let me think about it for a minute. So, first off, first off, first off, first pick is Rem. Rem, 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 Rem. Team Rem. Team Rem is alive and well. You know, this might be just me. I don't know. I, I don't want to be, you know, whatever a big authority on anime or whatever. It's all just subjective opinion and all that. And, uh, it's just a beautiful thing when a lot of people are passionate about the same anime. It's, it's really neat. But I think, you know, for me, with Rem, and even the other maid sister, Rom, Ram, whatever, um, you know, I think an attractive thing about such a character, whether you say Rem or Ram, Rem, Rom, whatever, in, in a general sense is if one one of them let's say rem you know and this is paralleling it you know starts out one way and then shifts over time you know which i think was you know the maid sisters rem and rom to a degree in their you know progressed portrayal um you know especially rem holy moly so uh i strongly liked the sort of you know, robotic, monotone professionalism at first. Then, given enough time, she became far more humanized. Uh, we saw her get crazy, mad, emotional, and then just full swing to the other side, uh, sad and falling for Subaru and all that. Boy, oh boy. And then being there for him for everything. But come in full circle um you know she became in enough of that time through that versus the start when they were portrayed just so professional with the maid thing and the talking in sync you know all that it seemed kind of robotic so i found it a great contrast that they were uh there was a a huge shift in polarization there so that that's something that was a very good thing to me um so yeah she became you know far more humanized and emotional as there was more than meets the eye to the whole ordeal and things changed boy oh boy um you know she was and this is kind of just brief whatever random note summaries on them so you know she was given uh in a writing sense she was given cannon fodder those demon dogs ma beasts um, a kind of mobbies or whatever, uh, you know, essentially as cannon fodder to hype her in episode nine and episode 10. Um, and of course, before that with whatever it was, episode five, six, maybe where it was, Subaru got killed off in the mansion and then later on revealed to be Rem and the chain, oh my goodness, that chain, oh, that chain, just this absolutely crazy epic, like, in that, was it episode 9 or episode 10, it's either episode 9 or episode 10, I think it's 10, I think it's 10, where, yeah, I think it's 10, no doubt 10, where the camera angle is just, you never see something like that, it's like you literally had the camera angle of the 
end of that mace and you could it just like really felt like the force was on that sucker and it just just the way they were going about it and swinging that dang thing it was epic her with that mace is epic and that's the beautiful thing of how it was written it she had a bunch of cannon fodder that was able to prop her up in that sense so um you know and then uh episode 15 uh one of the biggest highlights in anime i don't know how you can create a such a big moment to compete with that or you know surpass it somehow with the season two how are they supposed to pass, surpass episode 15 and you know 18 um so episode 15 uh she was defeated to prop up battle geese and then episode 18 her uh just being 200 percent there for subaru um and getting rejected him with his silly mind on amelia how much has amelia done for him and how much has rem done for him it's pretty clear to me so you know and i'm of the opinion uh with given how it was written you know uh all the different elements with rem being there for him every time lifting him up fighting for him literally willing to sacrifice herself time and time again fighting for him tooth and nail to the very end uh you compare that to amelia you know in a writing sense you know for it to be going the other route with amelia you know i, I don't know but it, it for me it's clearly written for folks to you know get behind ram be behind ram in the rem subaru route type thing and you know all the rem stuff was just teased endlessly and it was precious there were so many precious moments where they had these little little teases at it but such precious moments when they uh when they just had that that soft they were just like touching each other's heads after they defeated the white whale it, it just so many beautiful precious moments precious moments anyhow i shouldn't ramble on forever about one character should i all right my second pick second pick I, and i'm not having these ranked I, I that would probably be a whole different video i don't know i don't know i don't know what would be my top one but second pick subaru he starts off in real life just casually coming out of a grocery store and he gets summoned into a fantasy world that in of itself would mess with the mind a little bit if you were in a whole different world that would be terrifying all sorts of things uh there's like a thousand different layers to the psychology of subaru and uh his ability to return by death um you know you know that would probably be by standard impossible to deal with with your mind um and you know it didn't necessarily normalize you know too early but and and he did also break at points which to me is kind of like a steins gate parallel nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that um you know and having to die die and die again with the sheer pain and insane psychology that would have you know not only having to die but having to deal with the pain know you're getting killed off know you're going to be back again and have to try some different route oh man that is all just horrible and dark jeez you know all the psychology of it that would be there would be very heavy and tremendous um you know you'd probably get a phobia of return by death you'd probably get a phobia of dying and coming back even jeez um then on top of those to find yeah to keep you know finding yourself alive again at a prior time able to alter the future and your own fate and possibly others fates and the whole world whatever the case 
um, that's a that's a huge weight to carry huge weight to carry we're talking like uh, well no, I'm not gonna make a joke but anyhow let's just say a heavy person uh, and nothing against them I was just being funny um, so anyhow uh, and then there's the aspect to it within and his ability that I guess is uh, granted to him by the witch and that's also how he was summoned he was summoned there by the witch is my guest and guess and he has that ability returned by death to um, change things and somehow it was going to play into the witch's hand if she gave him those abilities and stuff I don't I don't know I'm not an expert on ReZero not an expert totally a fan but not an expert totally a fan because of episode uh, several different episodes but anyhow uh, let's get back to the notes. I keep going off board. Um, so yeah, that ability returned by death, that's a huge weight to carry. And to not be able to tell other people about your ability, uh, that would be a horrific restriction. And then to have that dang thing, like, just literally time stops and you feel your life threatened if you, if you talk about it. Jeez. Like, you will cease if or whatever else be the case if you if you try and talk about this so boy oh boy that kind of restriction would be really tough not to be able to tell people the one heaviest thing you're dealing with that would be tough because the best way uh, to deal with something is to be able to talk it through with someone so unlike Steins Gate, he couldn't spill the beans and get you know all the sympathy for uh, or empathy or whatever for what people don't know or didn't know which is his ability returned by death despite such Rem lifted him up when he was broken down time and time again whether it be lesser so or more so aka episode 18 I didn't appreciate it as much when I did it blind. Uh, you know, I didn't. I, I don't ever usually see a episode of anime where it's all talking, and I kind of just wanted to get back to the action, and that's what I generally uh, would label a filler episode, something that kind of bridges the gap and kind of just levels it out so that it can ramp back up again with the action or something like that, but. You know, if I did call it filler uh, in my blind reaction, that was pre-fanboy. And also, I disagree with myself. It was not filler. It was beautiful. Beautiful. I much more appreciate it now than I did prior when blind. That's pretty impressive. <clears throat> but anyhow, you know, he, he, he fought for Amelia... You know, that, that's his goal, saving Amelia, fighting for Amelia, and to be with Amelia, or whatever the case. Um, you know, so... And... You know, uh, he, he seemed to not... You know, we as the viewer, early on, we caught on to all the time travel stuff, and he wasn't really getting it. I guess that would be a... I don't know if that would be a normal thing or not to not catch on to it and you just be like kind of zoned out about the whole ordeal for the first number of times but then you catch on I don't know I don't know um, but the way it was presented to us was really well done we under we could understand it we know what was going on we knew he was thrown back uh, we knew that he didn't know quite everything yet so um, but later on he uh, seemingly became too pushy in like a self-entitled way with things in Amelia with his insider knowledge about things because returned by death and it came across the wrong way to her um, that caused a bunch of confusion and probably distance 
um, you know, he, he, he just came across way too pushy because he was trying to save them. And, you know, he just can't communicate certain things. So, of why he knows. So, that was tough. But, you know, he pulled through in the end, uh, saved the girl, and he has a decent shot. Although, there is far more REM fans. Without a doubt, there is far more REM fans I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure good luck Amelia good luck that's all I have to say to Amelia is good luck winning over the fan base in season two good luck I don't know I've, I've thought about season two ideas and different things but anyhow that's not the topic third character third can you take a guess can you guess it's none other than battle geese Oh, I love his one line. And I thought I only impersonated him, or mimicked him, uh, I think, three or four times, but I think I mimicked him five times, his one line. And, you know, him, Rem, Subaru, them mixed really created a lot of memorable moments. But anyhow, let me try and do his one line. <laughs> Sumashi, Sumashi. I can't do it. It's high pitched right now on the fly, but uh, I don't know. It, it's tricky to do. You got to sound like almost weird respiratory. Sumashi, Sumashi. You know, and you got to like stutter the first letter of it so it's very tricky but it, it's very fun as well to try and mimic his uh line it's it's very funny so that was his line from uh episode 15 when he was just getting a high off rem going all out berserk against him and fighting for subaru to save him from battle geese and so so anyhow uh i probably didn't mimic him as good anywhere near as good because i didn't couldn't practice beforehand i didn't practice beforehand as i did for the finale epilogue so so Bedokis, 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 Bedokis. he was a great psychopath character he's he might be one of the very early and only psychopath characters i've seen i've only seen one other crazy top psychopath character and that's in a show i'm still working on but anyhow and that'll be one of my best reaction series not that um not that i approve of everything in it it goes too far with some other elements fan service type stuff um, i really don't approve when that happens but anyhow with beto geese they were really unique with him as a psychopath. Like, as I was saying, with trying to pronounce, trying to say things as he said things, he he literally sounded like a psychopath. They added this unique flair to him. Uh, it, it almost was like he sounded, when he was getting that, you know, excitement build up from something going on or whatever, uh, he sounded like almost like he had a cold or like he sounded cold or just so excited you know respiratory wise that he you know sumashi sumashi type of thing he, he he stutters on the first part of pronouncing what he was gonna pronounce and that just indicates you know He's bonkers. He's cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs at that point. So, um, I think he was a really well done character. And all the other stuff with him, oh my gosh, just way over the top. And, you know, sometimes with reactions to episode 15, that uh, also that Suma Shi line, it can make me laugh because it, it is, you know, I don't think when I did it blind I laughed at all. I was taking it really seriously. But 
some people in some people's reactions being amused by it it made me heavily amused by it so i kind of laugh if other people are amused at that line it, it's just a thing i don't know but anyhow and the uh the soundtrack uh chanting when they uh they played for him on you know being in the episode of something one of them after 18 i don't know it was one of the last like five episodes it wasn't the finale i don't i don't think might have been the pre-finale i don't know mm, i can't remember but the, the soundtrack i have yet to find it but they just had when they portrayed him very briefly at like the temple area thing they had just this like orchestra chanting just like this chanting and it was so epic so epic so epic where was the rest of that it was too brief too brief it wasn't like a second it was like you know at least several seconds or something like that but that was an amazing moment as well um everything about how he was portrayed you know just crazy over the top psychopath bending over backwards you know uh everything about him uh Oh gosh, and the, you know, I knew when I saw Subaru waking up to him in the cave and the water drip sound, you just know something's bad. It reminded me of the end of Tokyo Ghoul. It, it, it was paralleling that for me, and that's what it reminded me of a lot. But him <sighs> chomping his fingers bleeding them to heck and then blood just coming out of his eyes just on a whim and him crying at certain things bonkers cuckoo for cocoa puffs bonkers you know that's what i have to say but uh anyhow back to the notes this is going to be crazy longer than i thought it would be wow the passion for re-zero is real that's nice very nice um so i don't know how anyone could get him out of their mind when you know in episode 15 this this was episode 15 was one of the darkest anime episodes i've ever seen you know it none of re-zero you know creeped me out to the extent that steins gate and erased did and as much as I enjoyed Erased, I wasn't part of the, you know, weekly cliffhanger mayhem. So in that, in that, in a large part of that extent, I didn't get sucked into it as much, and I didn't get to enjoy it in that sense as much as I did with Erased. And uh, well, I didn't see Steins Gate on a week-to-week -week thing, so. I guess that doesn't apply, but I, I definitely enjoyed Steins Gate and Erased more. Although Erased I kind of had botched at the end, but whatever. I'm kind of going off track on all this, and that's nothing against ReZero. ReZero is a really well done fantasy version of Steins Gate, whereas Steins Gate is realism. So, um, back to it. Episode 15. You know, that is such a pinnacle moment you know uh battle geese not only not only not only did he pretzel rem's body he warped her body twisting every limb out of socket not only did he do that but while he was doing that with him thinking she was dead dead 100% dead when she saved up just enough to last beyond it um, to save Subaru but not only did he twist her body twist all her limbs around and around and around and out of socket and the just the disgusting noises not only that while he was doing that, while he thought she was dead, 
He screamed on her behalf. He was yelling in agony on her behalf. Okay. Bonkers. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Alert, you know. That's what I have to say. But anyhow. Man, this video is going to be surprisingly very, very long. Uh, there's just so much to talk about with ReZero. It's amazing. Amazing, amazing. So, and that was uh, using his unseen hands, but uh, yeah, I already said that I got it in my notes. Um, you know, his death in the finale, um, I think, so this is kind of a general just discussion as well as, you know, what I originally thought the topic would be, top three characters. But anyhow, I'm almost done. So, um, you know, his death in the finale, it signals, in my opinion, that we need a new heel, a new bad guy for season two. So will we see the witch unleashed or will she possess Amelia or does she have a modified plan now that we're at where we're at? Because there's no doubt going to be a season two. It's crazy too popular, too crazy popular. And I heard that there's much more material, much more material to work with. Um, but we need a new character to fill Betelgeese's shoes as a heel. We need someone to be able to do that kind of stuff again. And somehow season two needs to be able to live up to season one, maybe even surpass it. I don't know how they're going to create such big moments and all those dang cliffhangers. You know, I don't know. Um, probably should save it for a side topic or whatever, but I guess I can include it all in one video. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll include it all in one video. So, not only what are your top three characters, what is your top secondary character? For me, I'm going with the obvious. Wilhelm, Wilhelm, Wilhelm. Um, not as much notes, but whatever. Um, you know, I think my favorite side character, secondary character, considering, you know, is Wilhelm, considering he had, you know, quite the impressive implemented backstory uh, going forward with the, you know, white whale, you know, whatever arc or, uh, you know, battle, essentially. Um, you know, it was it was great stuff to incorporate, uh, and that boosted him as a secondary character, which was really impressive. You know, you you don't always see all the time a decent backstory for all these secondary characters. It seems ReZero, you know, so heavy uh, going along with the plot, even though it did the Maid Sisters backstory stuff as well. Um, so it had them, it had, uh, you know, Wilhelm. So I, I don't remember if there was anything else. I, I don't know. Oh boy, Betelgeese backstory would be interesting. Oh, jeez. No, <laughs> but anyhow, uh, you know, man, was he epic, you know, Wilhelm. Just, just jogging it slicing up that whale like it was dinner like he was flaying that fish boy and he had something to fight for his wife the whale i think how it was said was the whale killed his wife his wife with him was a master swordswoman very high rank and you know he had that to fight for he wanted for ages to avenge his wife's death and after a very long time he succeeded man man oh man so to wrap this up i ask you passionate re-zero fans in this crazy long too long video somehow it got this long of a video which are your top three characters top three characters which are your top three and why uh also, which is your top secondary character and why? You know why mine are. 
uh, Wilhelm, he was crazy epic. Battle Geese, Top Heel, Suburu, or MC, and Rem, the proper romance route, a remance. Everything she did. These characters, Rem, Subaru, and Battle Geese, were, you know, key components in all those top moments. That's that's why. That's why. Subaru the MC, Rem, the Romance Tease, and Battle Geese the Psychopath. It all worked together just so well. It it created such a peak. Such a peak with episode fifteen. It is it still impresses me. Such a peak. And then to roll the credits like a legit movie near the end of that. Just wow. Alright, so I think I've lost track of what I'm supposed to say now. I've kind of gone through all my notes, but Ram versus Subaru versus Beto Geese. Oh, man. Oh, man. I, 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 I better not say. Oh, jeez. Who would I pick? Who's the top character of ReZero? You know, generally you'd have to say the main character so I'll just that's not fair it's not fair to have to pick uh, Beto Geese versus Subaru versus Rem no I, I'm not picking maybe in the comments I'll pick but it's it's too difficult too difficult of a of a, of a battle between all of them jeez not a battle but you know what I mean it is too difficult to pick between all of them. Rem versus Subaru versus Beto Geese. Rem is that romance. Subaru, the MC, went through a boatload, and Beto Geese was the top heel. Such a good heel. Uh, they all worked really well together and made huge moments, huge moments. And even the voice, I don't know, maybe I should have done a different video just on episode 15 alone. The voice acting in that was absolutely insane, too. Crazy on point how soft Rem spoke her lines you know when she freed Subaru and was dying how soft she spoke everything 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 of that episode just shined you know it could have been even to heck with the animation it still would have been grand stuff You know, El Huma. Sumashi. Sumashi. He's just losing it. Oh, man. Episode 15. One of the best episodes of anime I have ever seen. I kid you not. It went dark. It had a huge moment. And just wow. But anyhow, um, I am going way on overtime now. We are past 33 minutes. Oh, no. It was something that could have just been three minutes. I completely rambled on. The passion for ReZero is real. Real as the remnants. Season 2. Better deliver on that remnants. Remnants, remnants, remnants. No, I'm just kidding. Anyhow. It's going the Amelia way. He digs Amelia. That eh, dumb dumb. What a baka. Baka. Baka no no. Anyhow. So yeah, that's it. That's it. So if you guys want to include your favorite character as well, your top three, your favorite character, and your favorite secondary character. Top three characters, top character. Uh, maybe just ranked top three characters. Let's go with that. Uh, oh man, that is so tough though. That is so tough. I could just have the video going for a half hour and I wouldn't be able to decide. I don't know. I'll go with Subaru 1, Rem 2, and Beto Geese 3. It's, it's so difficult any which way you put it. So, I don't know. So, yeah, that's it. That's it. All right, so, essentially, what are your top three characters ranked? 
what's your favorite secondary character as well why 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 are they your favorites why are they the top all right 35 minutes we heard way overboard so thank you very much for watching this extra video topic of ReZero. I don't know if I'll find another topic but uh, this will certainly do 35 minutes worth so thank you very much for watching stay tuned for more of something lots of good stuff up ahead that I'm working on stay tuned I will see you up ahead take her cool